Hello, and welcome back to Underdog Investing. Today I'd like to talk about CRISPR genome editing. And the reason is because I think that this could be a massive investing opportunity in the future in terms of companies like CRISPR Therapeutics. So that's why I want to go through ARK Invest white paper on CRISPR genome editing, uh, which is about 25 page uh, white paper, which I can uh, put a link down in the description below. But basically, uh, I took the important points and I'd like to summarize them in a simple way that helped me understand this topic. So hopefully it can help you as well. Um, and then I'd like to talk about the CRISPR therapeutics stock price and then go through what I'm planning to do. So before I jump into the video, I'll be very grateful if you can smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for future updates. So let's jump straight into it. First of all, what is CRISPR uh, genome editing? And the way I like to understand it, because this, it is quite complicated, but the way I see it is, so we've got um, every human being has a, a genetic code. And that genetic code basically is the instructions that um, helps make our cells, which help make us as humans. And each genetic code is different uh, from human to human. And there are alterations in these genetic codes which lead to uh, diseases such as, for example, diabetes or cancers. And what CRISPR genome editing is, is a technology which allows us to alter these uh, particular codes uh, which are causing the diseases. Um, and it can, number one, prevent these diseases from happening, and number two, it could uh, possibly treat these diseases as well. So that's what I see um, CRISPR genome editing as. Um, so that's my simple way of understanding it. So moving on to uh, the uh, use cases of it. So why is CRISPR genome editing so good? So there's there's quite a few genome uh, editing techniques out there. For example, ZFNs and Talons. I'm not going to go into detail of how these work, but basically, if you have a look here, in 2003, ZFNs um, was a technique which took about 22 days to manufacture, and it cost about 5,500 uh, per pair of nucleases edited. So that doesn't sound too bad, but when, when you have a look at six years later, you can see that Talons um, is another technique which uh, took 10 days to manufacture, so less than half the time, and it was uh, $360 uh, cost per pair of nucleases. So that's actually more than 10 times cheaper than ZFNs. But what's more impressive is if you have a look at just three years later, CRISPR genome editing. Uh, in 2012, it took five days only to manufacture and it cost $30, which is more than 10 times cheaper than Talons and more than 100 times cheaper than ZFNs. So that just shows you how much more effective CRISPR genome editing is and why we're looking into it so deeply. And this is just another graph just to demonstrate the cost effectiveness of CRISPR editing compared to uh, Talons. So as you can see here, on the bottom, you can see the different techniques. So gene knock-in, knock-out, gene silencing and upregulating and downregulating of gene expression. And then in terms of the uh, this column here, you've got the cost. So in the orange is the talons genome editing, whereas the green is the CRISPR. So you can see how much lower the cost is for CRISPR genome editing. And then this graph basically demonstrates the um, uh, the popularity of CRISPR genome editing in terms of uh, amongst scientists uh, and the way they looked at it is they looked at over time uh, the different uh, genome editing techniques like CRISPR, Talons, ZFNs uh, and they looked at the number of publications on PubMed and as you can see the green uh, graph is uh, for CRISPR and then everything else is down here so you can clearly see how CRISPR genome editing was significantly more popular amongst scientists. And that's for a very good reason. It's because it's more effective and that's why people want to look more into it. Now let's talk about CRISPR genome editing in terms of how it can benefit humans. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about something called CART. So um, I think that stands for Chimeric Antigen Receptor uh, T cell therapy and it sounds very complicated but um, the way I like to think about it is basically all humans have immune systems and these immune systems are basically made up of cells which help us to fight things like infections. Um, 
we've got T cells in our body which are particular types of immune system cells and what we've discovered is in, with CRISPR genome editing what we can do is we can take these T cells out of our body and then we can edit it in a way so that they become more effective and what they can actually do once we've edited it is do things like um, actually detect cancers and they can actually fight the cancer cells that they detect so that's pretty much what CART is uh, from my understanding and this particular graph shows you the uh, total addressable market so let's have a look at the left hand side graph first so this looks at the annual total addressable market for CART in the US alone and if you have a look just for liquid tumors so things like blood tumors the total addressable market is 17 billion dollars whereas if we have a look at the solid tumors in the US uh, annually it's 105 billion dollars now what's even more exciting is if we have a look at the global total addressable market for the same um, uh, CART therapy and you can see here that the liquid tumors globally is 40 billion and for solid tumors is 250 billion so it's a massive market now this particular graph is just to show you the how that 105 billion dollars is uh, broken down in terms of the US total addressable market if you remember here that particular 105 billion so how, how is it divided um, so it's divided into uh, two main categories you've got the autologous delivery and then you've got the allergenic delivery okay so starting with the autologous delivery so that was what I described to you earlier so how you take the cells out of the body you edit it in a way to uh, improve the function and then you put it back into the same person that's called autologous uh, delivery and then that is basically divided into late and early stage cancers which account for 11 and 55 billion dollars respectively and then you've got allergenic delivery which is basically when you take out um, T cells from a particular person and you um, edit it in a certain way to improve the function but instead of putting it back into the same person you now put it into another person who needs it and that's called allergenic delivery um, and then again that's divided into late and early stage cancers as well and that accounts for 6 and 33 billion um, in total so that's how that, that 105 billion dollars um, of solid tumour um, is broken down in terms of addressable market okay so now we're going to look at monogenic disease uh, market so what is monogenic disease the way I understand monogenic disease is that um, these are uh, diseases which is caused by a single uh, gene abnormality um, and that is as opposed to poly polygenic um, diseases which is caused by um, abnormalities in several uh, genes or c several parts of the code um, in, in the biological uh, genome um, so just looking at the monogenic disease market you can see that um, in terms of the initial opportunity so that is for everyone who has monogenic diseases that's actually a 1.9 trillion dollar market and then if we have a look at in terms of annually so that's looking at um, uh, the number of births uh, per year and how many of them have monogenic diseases that's a 75 billion dollar market annually which is incredible um, but what's even more exciting is if we have a look here that 75 billion annual addressable market um, and 1.9 trillion so that's almost 2 trillion uh, in terms of addressable market for monogenic disease but you can see here that monogenic diseases is only 2% of genetic diseases and the rest of the 98% comprises of polygenic diseases now obviously it's not as simple as saying oh the polygenic disease uh, industry is worth 98 trillion dollars but just by looking at this graph you can see that the polygenic disease market is significantly larger than the mon monogenic disease market um, that these numbers are just incredible I mean I've never seen numbers like this before let's talk a bit about the agriculture now so it's, uh, CRISPR genome editing is not only good for um, uh, for humans um, it's also good for agriculture 
So let's have a look at some of the uh, use cases. So in terms of um, livestock, uh, we can help with uh, TB resistant cattle. We can call, we can make uh, pigs with lower fat content, uh, increase milk production yield. In terms of crops, we've got things like higher yield, pesticide free, weather slash bug resistant crops. We've got enhanced taste and nutritional value. And in terms of uh, aquaculture, you've got things like reduced uh, gestation period in half, uh, increased feed conversion ratio, and sterilized uh, farmed fish uh, to protect wildlife. So you've got lots of different use cases for CRISPR editing in terms of agricultural use. And just to have a look at the addressable market for this uh, sector. So in terms of by 2025, it's a $170 billion market uh, just in terms of uh, global agriculture. And that's divided into livestock, which accounts for 20 billion, crops, which account for 110 billion, and aquaculture, which accounts for 35 billion. And the reason why uh, crops is so important is because if we think about it, the human population is going to grow at a very fast rate. And there's going to be a point where the current uh, methods of agriculture is not going to be able to sustain the growth in, in terms of the population. So we are going to have to innovate and um, using things like CRISPR uh, gene editing to improve uh, the yield uh, quality as well as the quantity is going to allow us to sustain uh, the agriculture uh, to uh, be able to feed the uh, increased number of people as we uh, move through the years. So just to highlight the important points that I've mentioned, so $250 billion annual global CRISPR enabled CART addressable market, $75 billion in annual global revenue for just monogenic diseases. And then in terms of the uh, prevalence basis for monogenic diseases, that's $1.9 trillion global addressable market. Agriculture, we've got crops, livestock, and aquaculture, which accounts for a $170 billion market. Um, and this is value creation by 2025. And we've got 585 trillion increase in calorie production, which will allow us to feed an additional 800 million people by 2025. So as you can see here, just by looking at these numbers, you can see that not only are we investing in something which is gonna potentially give us a lot of returns in the future, but we're actually investing in something which is gonna do extreme amounts of good for the uh, humanity. So personally, I see this as a very good industry to at least have a portion of my portfolio in. And I just wanna to touch on the uh, stock of CRISPR therapeutics, so ticker symbol CRSP. So I personally do hold uh, some CRISPR stock um, I actually got in at around January, so about 158. So I'm actually down on my um, position, but uh, I do see this as a great opportunity. Um, I, I'm going to continue holding it, and I'm uh, I've, I have actually been uh, adding to my position as we've been um, uh, pulling back. Because if, if you have a look here at the one year chart, you can see that we've had a significant run up of almost 500%. Uh, so having a pullback of around 30% is entirely normal. And if anything, I see this as an opportunity to pick up more stocks. Uh, if I wasn't, um, if I didn't have a position, like I said, I will still continue to, uh, I'll, I'll probably at a starter position and um, buy any dips. So that's how I would tackle this stock. Um, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd be grateful if you can like and subscribe. Uh, if you found it useful in any way, please do share this video and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below. Now, um, so thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.